Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Hope you're swell. Hope you're lazy. Hope you're brave. Hope you're brave. Hope you're crazy. Hope you're doing good. You're doing great. I make music, by the way. I make music. I make music. I make music. I'm doing the song that they chant. 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 So link in description if you want to check out what I dropped this past Friday. Link in description. I greatly appreciate you if you do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then you can go to my YouTube shorts tab if you want to hear clips of my music. Hear little clips. And then like, comment, subscribe. All that wonderful stuff. It really helps the, the videos, guys. When you like, when you comment, when you subscribe. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Someone had suggested, shout out to you, if you're watching this, that I, one, one new trigger I could use is cutting the rolls. So I don't want to cut this one with all the ink in it, because I've spent time on that. So I'm going to cut this one, this new one, and we'll see how, how it goes. Last night I had a dream, it's a silly dream, it was funny, uh, I had, I don't know, I'd, I'd made some big purchase, um, with money, I, 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 I don't know what I got, what I bought, um, but I was telling this girl about this thing I bought, and she, and she was just like, wow, her eyes lit up, and I could tell she was interested in me, because I, <laughs> Uh, she could tell that, you know, I had a job and I, I had my stuff together and that, that was literally the dream. That was just, I bought something, I told this girl about it and then, uh, she started flirting. And then I woke up and I was just like, that's funny. But there's truth to that. There's truth to how girls don't want to be with, I think when you get to a certain age, you don't want to be with a broke boy anymore. You start looking for different things and... A marker of a capable individual that you want to spend your life with is uh, he can take care of himself. He's got his finances in order. You more likely to take him seriously. It's not. It's not the only thing you're looking at, but it's an important thing when you're talking about wanting to build a life with someone. You distinguish. Well, that's done. <laughs> I need to sleep when I'm done here. There's, there's a difference between that and a gold digger. I think those type of girls, they won't just date you just because you have money. Like obviously, if you've got like um, aspects of your personality that they don't like, or, or maybe. If they feel like you're just not right for them, like they won't be happy with you. Yeah, they'll 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 give you a pause. I think some will, will just kind of if it, if if you don't have like serious flaws and they're not crazy about you, but they can see a secure life with you. I think some girls will just kind of go with that as opposed to chasing like passion and stuff like that, just because they're thinking long term. But uh, I wouldn't advise that just because life is long and you don't want to be with someone. I mean, it's up to the individual. If it's not a big priority to you, like to like if feelings and all this mushy gushy stuff isn't a big priority for you, I guess you don't have to prioritize that when you're selecting a, a partner. But life is long. You don't want to be with someone that you're not in love with, you know, because... After a while, you can get kind of get tired of. I don't know what I was watching. Oh, I was watching this Japanese, this J drama, and this woman was talking about how, when she's alone with her husband, she was an old woman. She was talking about how when she's alone with her husband, they don't have anything to talk about, because all he talks about is like, like baseball and the weather. He just talks about baseball, and the weather, and she was like, it. They have like those awkward silences and stuff. I'm like, imagine. I hope. 
like with my relationship, it's never like that. Like we have awkward silences. I hope we can always have stuff to talk about. That's why I'm hoping like the things I'm interested in, she's interested in. Because then we can talk about all sorts of things. We can talk about politics. We can talk about nerd culture, whether it's like games or movies or, or uh, I don't watch anime that much, but you know, anime, um, whatever it came, some books we read, stuff like that. Like you always want stuff to talk about. So I'm hoping I can get someone who's interested in the things I'm interested in. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm sure I can find that. I'm sure it's, yeah, I'm sure I can find it. So yeah, man, it's important to, to, to value a lot of things, but yeah, finances are important. So it's not gold digging to say, I want a partner who can take care of me and sort of stuff like that. Mm, I got this brush and I was seeing dust coming off of it, so I can I'll just do this instead. There's less dust that way. Mm, there's still dust. I abandoned the brush because there's dust. I need to wash it first and then I don't want dust going all over the place. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, it's not gold digging. It's just, it's having a holistic view of things and, and long-term planning and having your priorities in order and stuff like that. I get it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So long as, you know, it's balanced out with, like, it's also important to assess character and stuff like that as well. Because sometimes some girls you will just chase the money and in the money alone and not consider other things. Sometimes it's like, you know, you might find a guy who, he's not the richest, he's not, yeah, you know, he's he's got enough, but he's also a great guy. That's just what Sometimes I hear all sorts of crazy things. Sometimes he has to be making six figures. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a minority of people. But anyway, um, yeah, I'd love to get to a point where I can be making enough to to take care of my wife. I can already hear some some feminist types being like, oh, "I don't need a man." I'm fine on my own. I don't need anyone. Let's square up, bro. Let's fight, bro. <laughs> All this masculine energy. Hey, man, teach the own. If that's you, that's your business. I'd like... Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to take care of my girl. It's nice. The, the concept of, like, you're with her, you can be like, you know, if you want that, you can get that, and whatever, whatever, and just being a provider, being able to give what she wants. It's nice. It's a nice concept. I think it's just the masculine urge to want to provide Right. Um, I was watching. I told you I was watching like, videos of these house tours, and they have these his and her bathrooms. So these are big mansions, right? So they have like separate bathrooms for the woman and the man in the rooms so like the man has his bathroom in the in the there's a big room right i think in that particular house it was like the entire floor was for the main suites for the main bedroom if i'm not mistaken i think it was a room it was a big room massive room that had two bathrooms so then how it works was the man's bathroom was smaller than the woman's bathroom and his walk-in closet was smaller than her walk-in closet. The woman's bathroom was like so lavish. It was very nice. Was a lot. There was a lot going on there. <laughs> then the man's bathroom, you know, it was still nice because right? it's a mansion, you know, it still had nice things. But it was, compared to the woman, you know, like, yo, it was not nearly as nice. I think she got like a double basin sink. Like, you know, like a, she had two basins. 
the man only had one day sink. Uh, his shower looked smaller. She got a bigger mirror with it had like it there's a button you press for lights and stuff. Like there's just the the bathroom overall was just bigger. There's just more way more space. I think it was double the size of a man to be honest. And I, I get it, women take more time with these sort of things, getting dressed and and whatnot and, and take like I don't know what, what they do. I, I really don't know what they'll be doing in the bathroom. Um, I get it. So it's that concept of providing for her and taking care of her and giving her nice things. I like it. I think it's dope. Now, I will say, that bathroom is so nice. I'll be like, babe, we need to share because I want to use your bathroom. I don't want to use mine. Yours is so much better than mine. <laughs> this shit. I don't think she'd mind unless like, I make a mess or something. But at that point, if you're that rich, you can probably, you probably have people working for you that can clean up the mess, right? I don't think I'll make, I don't make that, I don't make a mess, and I clean up after myself as well, so I think it'd be a problem. So, yeah, I don't think she'll have, depending on who I'm with. <laughs> that bathroom is so nice, I have to make it. <laughs> nah, let's share, dude. I don't know, that bath, uh, my bathroom is so wack. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's the concept, it's the concept. She gets the nice things. So that's the thing about the, the, the leadership role, people don't understand, it comes with a lot, like you have, it's a service role, you're serving, you're, you're providing, you're putting others ahead of yourself, it's not, it's not about sitting and being fed grapes while you're chilling, you know, your feet out, the legs stretch out, it's not about that, it's about, I've used this example before, but I remember sitting at Starbucks, and this man was with his family, it was a big family too, there was like a bunch of people, those, I think the, he's, his parents were there, like, so the grandparents were there, like, the the kids' his grandparents. So the man's parents were there, and then his wife was there, and then the, the babies were there. And the whole family came, there's an uncle there, and we were sitting at Starbucks, and he was getting everyone's drink orders. <laughs> and being impatient, like, well, I, I, I need to go back, I need to go back to the till, like, tell me your order, and da 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 and I, I just took note of how he's serving everyone. Like the ladies were just chilling, or like sitting back, relaxing, laughing, talking about some stuff. Everyone was chilling. Like he was the one going like back and forth, getting over his drinks and stuff. And it pretty much sums up the leadership role. It's, it's, it's not this glamorous thing where everyone's serving you. It's the other way around. You serve them. You know, Christ said um, well the biggest example he gave of that was when he washed his disciples feet and he said the first amongst you shall be lost you know what I'm saying he's trying to tell them that if you want to be first you must serve you must live to serve so that's I think that's what every head of the household is called to do as a man and you leave the family as a service for it doesn't mean that now you're this king and everyone just tends to every need and all that sort of stuff now people should express gratitude of course they shouldn't be little parasites little issues they should, they should uh, they should express gratitude your family should express gratitude and make it as easy for you as possible to, to lead Instead of giving you stress all the time. But yeah, it's important to know what comes with that. Um, so yeah. And I'm down for it, of course. I'm built for it. I think that's the, 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 the male project. The male directive. Is to lead and therefore to serve. Yeah, it'll be my objective to make sure she's happy, to make sure that I'm doing a good job and that like, she's rating me five out of five husbands. You know what I'm saying? Five out of five would recommend that I'm not recommending because he's mine. <laughs> it's, 
not out for long. But yeah, I want to do well. I want her to be happy. I want her to have nice things to say about me when I'm there. I believe I'll do a good job. I believe I'll have it. Contrary to the beliefs of some of you people who comment, <laughs> have all sorts of things to say about me. I actually think I, I know I'm a nice guy. I know in my personal relationships with with uh, with women in my life, I know that I keep them around. That uh, yeah, now you know I am. Conservative in my in my beliefs and social stances and stuff like that, and and typically the girls I've gone out with or that I've been into have been more liberal types because of the, the spaces I find myself in as an artist. The people you mingle with, you get introduced to other artists, and these tend to be very liberal individuals, and yeah. But you know what? I think it's also the fact that I'm living in a major city. And city life, city girls, you tend to just get a bunch of liberalism, right? Even in church, some of these church girls, like this girl I know from church, and she was telling me just to straight up about the guy she's been with. Guy, yeah, yeah, that's, not, that's not church. That That's not sanctioned by the church. What? It's not. Yeah, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's the city life for you. That's the that's about people being living in the city. <clears throat> you know, getting drunk, doing all sorts of things like that. Oh. So, it's not for me. But, uh, but that being said, even though that's kind of who I've dealt with in the past with, 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 with the ladies I've always been yeah nice and we've we've had good times and we've had disagreements of course but I think it was all It was, just, it was nice. It's just one of those things where you know you're not going to work. And it's like, eh, we're too different. Maybe we shouldn't really, uh, take this further. But I've always enjoyed those interactions just because it's like practice, you know. It's fun. Dating's fun. Like, like I mean, like actually going on dates and getting to know the person and stuff like that. I like that. I like the whole thing. Uh, it's just about meeting the right person that shares your values and you click with. You just get along. I need a high IQ person so I can have high IQ babies. I want to have high IQ babies. Smart babies. Smarter than me. Smarter than her. Just smart babies. People take for granted how much genetics plays into things sometimes. A lot of people are blessed by good genes, but it's also work ethic. Sometimes good genes can only take you so far. You also have to have the drive and the resilience. Some things are not inherited. You have to make choices at the end of the day. Because someone can maybe not strike the jackpot, jackpot of the genetic lottery and still go very far in life. Still do it very, very well. You know what I'm saying? We see we 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 have seen stories like that time and time again. There's this basketball player, uh, Fred Van Fleet. He's not that tall. He's actually very short by NBA standards. And yeah, he beat the odds, man. 
Because I'm sure many people told him in his life, you're too short to play in the NBA. Go play in some other league, some country like these Japanese leagues, or go play in Russia, or go play, I don't know, these European leagues. But don't try and join the NBA. It's too competitive, and you're not, you don't have the height advantage that you would need in such a competitive space. You need every advantage you can get, and you're too short. You can't dunk. You can't reach the rim. <laughs> He's too short. How short is he? My laptop is in the other room. I can't do that. I think he's like 5'10, five, 5'11 five, or something. He's not 6 foot. He might be. Because that's the thing about basketball. These guys are so tall that they can make like someone that's like 6 foot look short as hell. Some of these guys are like 6'7, six, 6'8, six, six, Like, whoa, what's that Webem Yama guy? Webem Yama, he is. He is freakishly tall. I saw him jump from. Uh, I don't know what the. What they call that particular line. But he jumped from an incredible distance. He jumped. And I was like, this is but he's not just a, he's quite skilled he's quite good with his handling and dribbling and decision making and stuff like that so he wouldn't have made it that far if he was just tall he's got a lot of stuff going for him uh, but anyway what was my main point with all that? I was talking about kids genetics and whatnot. I can't wait to have kids I can't wait to have like family in a nice house I've, I've watched a lot of episodes of my wife and kids and I'm like, that's my fantasy that lifestyle that family lifestyle wife and kids at home they just uh, yeah just time to live life making those sorts of memories so, so, so nice so wholesome so I'm looking forward to that um, that's why I'm motivated to get my finance finances up so I can just make a good lifestyle. Right? Live in a nice neighborhood and do nice things as a family. And I want to homeschool my kids as well because number one, homeschooling is superior. You get to cater to each individual and their individual needs. The issue with, with like public school, private school, whatever school, a lot of the time at least, is a teacher's attention is split between between like maybe thirty people, whatever whatever the number is. Whereas with homeschooling, your child gets individual attention, and there's all sorts of resources and curriculum curriculums you can get and apply to your child. Like, but you teach them at a pace that they're comfortable at. And it's super. It, it it always it usually has superior results. They score higher on standardized tests and stuff like that. And you know. It's, they, they, they do more in less time. The typical home, homeschooling day is many hours less than the typical public school day. So it gives them time to do other things. And you can socialize them with um, other kids, with clubs. You, you can jo let them join sports clubs, music clubs. Uh, you can take them to karate classes with other kids. And there's so many things you can do to socialize them. Don't, school isn't the only place you, 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 you can uh, socialize your kids. So that'll be their exposure. And they can make friends that way. It's so many opportunities for that. And then also, like, as a family, you get to spend more time together and do more things together. You can travel together pretty much anytime you want. Because obviously, if they're homeschooled, you can take the school with you. Um, so you, you can be traveling and then going on vacation and stuff and they can still be learning and stuff so yeah I, I, I read a book where one was describing her homeschooling methodology and she's talking about how it's extremely flexible because you can literally just go wherever and she can run errands with her kids she can do so much and she doesn't have to be um, in the house all the time and stuff like that so Science superior. And it means 
get to spend more time with your kids because you know the thing with full school is you're at school eight hours a day however many hours it is for like 12 years 13 years so for most of your, your childhood you're in you're in someone else's care for most of your childhood i'm not seen as my as my own child that's crazy that's crazy to me um, I want to see my kids and I want to be there for them. And I think I'll just be closer because we share so much time together. And yeah, looking forward to it. I really am. I want to have girls just because I don't know. I just, I just do. I want to have one son at least. But I have a feeling I'm going to have girls. I just, I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. We'll see. I used to watch Tia and Tamara, and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I always thought that dynamic they had with their dad was nice. So I was like, that will be nice. It's funny how I'm obviously basing a lot of these fantasies off of like shows I watched and whatnot. It can seem childish and naive, but I, I do want these things. It's just what I do is I have these desires and then I I find references, like like, like things I can point to that kind of mirror that, that kind of reflect that, that kind of represent that and uh yeah that's why i like my wife and kids that's why i like uh um what's it called t and tamara i used to like this show called according to jim but i didn't i stopped watching it because there, there is a common thing in a lot of sitcoms where they always make the dad super dumb you know like homer simpson and the guy from modern family and according to jim and all these other shows the guy the dad is always some idiot that's just makes a lot of stupid decisions and I, and I never liked that portrayal of fathers it's not it's not a good portrayal because that becomes the public consensus like like media is powerful when you keep showing dads as these dumb dumbs that's not that's not good so for i liked my wife and kids because the main character my uncle Carl, he's the head of his household he's his father He's also very he's smart and he's capable and he's, he's sensible. It's a comedy show, so obviously he's going to be acting up here and there and being eccentric, but for the most part, he's he's respected at work. He's respected by his, his well, his wife is kind of like, well, feminism had already crept into the public by then. It was like, what? This was like 2001 when the show started running. So by then, yeah, feminism was already a big thing. Since the sixties, really, it's been it's been all over the place. Um, but yeah, there's this general. Let me put it that way. There's general respect, and uh, I liked it. I liked the show. I thought it was refreshing. Uh, that's what I'm going for as well. In my own relationship, in my own family. I don't want. No, oh, dad, dad, no, oh, there goes dad again. Well, wow, well, what, what, what are we gonna do about him? He's like, I'm just, they just view me as this, this, I don't know, this dog dog. I don't know. Respect, but you know one thing about respect. Respect is earned. You don't, you shouldn't have to ask for it. You shouldn't respect me. It's like, I think people just naturally respect you because of the way you move, the way you conduct yourself. So, yeah, I'll lead by example. I'll handle business. I'll do everything I'm supposed to do on my part. And, uh, yeah, because I married a sensible wife who gave me sensible babies, they will respect me. They will give me my just dues. I was reading about... Uh, She shared something on my community tab. This girl talked about how she got off of she got off of birth control and her sex drive went through the roof. And she was like thinking about sex frequently. And it made me feel scammed. Because do you know how many times I've been yelled at when I when I expressed my desire to be in a relationship that has frequent sex? Like frequent. 
super people. Just, uh, yeah, that's just the masculine desire. I think every dude thinks about that, wishes for that, or whatnot. And then we kind of get convinced that girls aren't like that. Girls aren't as into sex as men. And I guess technically they're not, right? Because there are biological differences, and testosterone does play a role in that. But, you know, you listen to some of these girls, it seems like a lot of these girls think about it just as much as a lot of guys do. So I think it's very possible to find a woman who is uh, who values sexual intimacy as much as her man will. I don't think it's as common because I do hear a lot of guys complaining So I think there is truth to this idea that there are those discrepancies, but I, I think I can find a girl who, who's on my, my my wavelength, my level. I need a freak, dude. Not like a degenerate, but like, you know, I need someone who's like, down to get a freaky freaky. Anyway, I've said a lot. What should I? What should we drop? What, what were we talking about? We're talking about, uh, I guess we're talking about family. Drop a family emoji. I'm sure there's a family emoji. I'm sure there's a f- emoji of a group of people in the family. I- I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Drop a family emoji. If not, you can literally just drop a man, woman, and a baby. It's three separate emojis. Man emoji. Baby emo- I mean, woman emoji and baby emoji. No, man emoji. Is there a little boy and little girl emoji? I don't know. I think there is. So, yeah. Then you can have a complete set. So, man emoji, woman emoji, little boy emoji, little girl emoji. I'm sure there's one of each, right? Just drop that in the comments. If you can't find the family emoji, but I'm pretty sure that's a thing. So let me know that you watched the whole video. Let me pray and get out of here. Just pray and get out of Dear Father God, thank you for this individual watching this round. I thank you for making them whole, unique, and guide them all to peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this person with wonderful people in life who love them, take care of them, bring the absolute best out of them. Thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in their life. And by giving thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attract even more blessing. Let your presence be found in this personal life so they know that your God, that your religion is going to be there for them. Love them and uh, good health, long life. And happiness over this person and everyone that took care about it. You're right, I'm praying. She's not praying. She's not praying. Amen, 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 amen.